Over the weekend, Andrew Yang was interviewed by CNN's Jim Acosta. And um, let me tell you, this interview did not go well for Andrew Yang. In fact, I'd argue that it was a complete and utter disaster because in this interview, Andrew Yang could have made the case for his party, but instead he ended up revealing how uninformed, out of touch, and quite frankly, vapid he is when it comes to the most pressing political issues of our time because not only does he not tell us any of the forward party's political views, but he just tries to ride the fence, but he doesn't do it in an effective or persuasive manner, and it just makes him look really unserious. So uh, let's talk about this. There's a couple of clips that I want to play for you, but this is the first one. And let me ask you about your new forward party, because uh, you say it's an attempt to appeal to what you say is the, the moderate common sense majority. It's also the same name as your book. Um, is this an attempt to pump up book sales? Well, uh, I, I'd have to say this would be a pretty silly way to go about it, given that we <laughs> have co-founded a national party uh, that now has tens of thousands of Americans signed up, uh, co-chaired by former governor of New Jersey, Christine Todd Whitman. And the fact is 62% of Americans- But are you just promoting yourself, I guess is what, and, I'm, I guess what I'm asking, is are you just out there promoting uh, <laughs> yourself with this? Uh, again, Jim, that there, there are, as you can uh, easily imagine, there are hundreds of better ways uh, to go about uh, promoting a, a, a book than starting a political party to do so. I mean, I, I'm building this party because 62% of Americans want it. We're more polarized than ever. And the fact is the two parties have divvied up the country so that 79 to 90% of races are uncompetitive. Most of the people watching this right now aren't even living under a two-party sister system. They're living under one party. Now, what Andrew Yang said right there is technically true. The problem is that the mere existence of the forward party or any alternative to the Democrats and Republicans, for that matter, is not going to fundamentally change the institutions, emphasis on institutions, that created the conditions that led to this duopoly. It's called Duverger's Law. Now, he hasn't addressed Duverger's law, and he's barely talked about things that he could do to maybe subvert Duverger's law. But for those of you who don't know, this is what Duverger's law is. Now, I'm just going to go to the Wikipedia definition because, believe it or not, I tried to pull up the Oxford definition, and it was less correct than Wikipedia because they claimed that Maurice Duverger, who created Duverger's law or was named after, was a political scientist when that's not actually true. He was a sociologist, but that's neither here nor there. This is the definition of Duverger's law. In political science, Duverger's law holds that single ballot plurality rule elections such as first past the post structured within single member districts tend to favor a two party system. The discovery of this tendency is attributed to Maurice Duverger, a French sociologist who observed the effect and recorded it in several papers published in the 1950s and 1960s. In the course of further research, other political scientists began calling the effect a law or principle. As a corollary to the law, Duverger also asserted that proportional representation favors multi-partyism as does the plurality system with runoff elections. And that right there is what Andrew Yang fails to address. To his credit, he does say we should have ranked choice voting, and we'll talk about the platform in a second here. But ranked choice voting in and of itself may not actually ameliorate the issue because what the ranked choice voting will do is it will make third party candidates more viable. Yes, that's true because it eliminates the so-called spoiler effect. The problem is that what we really want to do is make it so the system itself is not majoritarian and we have a more proportional system. We change the district magnitude, meaning that rather than all of us just having one representative, perhaps we have two, three, maybe four representatives. So that way, if our first choice Voice doesn't get elected or the party who we vote for usually doesn't get elected, well, there's another person that will get elected. So you have to make the system more proportional. Now, this is no easy task, but you're not, not just going to create a multi-party system by sheer force of will. What you have to do is change the institutions. Now, in the event Andrew Yang created this party or formed it as an organization to drive actual electoral reform, then I would be on board because I think we need something like this. Even though there are other organizations that are fighting for electoral reform, if this is another one, then great. But the problem is that just simply saying we need ranked choice voting isn't a solution. How are you going to do this? How are you going to enact ranked choice voting? Are you going to use this organization as a vehicle to create ranked choice voting ballot initiatives in states where that's possible? He doesn't come up with any solutions. It's all vague. And you can tell he hasn't thought this through. And Jim Acosta saw it. Hence why he asked pretty bluntly, uh, are you doing this to promote your book? Ouch. 
That is a CNN host on mainstream media seeing through your grift. If Jim Acosta can see through you and realize that you're a grifter, you're being a little bit too conspicuous, Andrew Yang. Now he responded by saying, there are hundreds of better ways to go about promoting a book. Really though, is there? Because I think that, you know, if you name this party after your book, then when you Google forward party, perhaps your book also comes up and, you know, win-win. I mean, perhaps, look, let's be extra charitable and assume that he genuinely believes in this. Either way, you clearly haven't talked to political scientists. You clearly haven't talked to experts. You clearly haven't talked to representatives or grassroots organizers at the state level who could, in theory, help you enact this agenda to get electoral reform. I mean, the Green Party has been going at this for decades. Talk to them about electoral reform and some of the barriers that third parties deal with. But he's not really addressing that. And that is indeed a problem. Now, he says, uh, I'm building this party because 62% of Americans want it. We're more, po we're more polarized than ever. And the fact is that the two parties have divided up the country. So 79 to 90% of races are uncompetitive. Now, this is true. He's correct about that. So again, he accurately diagnosed one of the problems here. But if you're going to really tackle the duopoly, you have to have solutions. You have to have a plan for institutional reform but he has nothing. It gets worse, believe it or not. President Biden, I can hear Democrats over the White House saying President Biden has had Republican support on a number of agenda items. He is trying to work in a bipartisan fashion. Uh, why not try to support that as a Democrat? You were just a de Democrat 10 minutes ago. Oh, uh, I support attempts to cross the aisle, but we can all see that seven out of 10 of the Republicans that bravely voted to impeach Trump are already going to be out of Congress by the time uh, January comes al along. And the moderate population in both parties is unfortunately dwindling quickly. So the political incentives end up dis uh, disproportionately empowering the 10% of extremes on both sides. But you're going to have to come up with policy really positions. negative results. Right, but we Andrew, just need a better system. Yeah, but Andrew, you're going to have to have policy uh, positions at some point. How does the forward party feel about Roe versus Wade? Should it have been overturned? Well, I personally uh, think that women's reproductive rights are fundamental human rights. But the forward party has uh, not left or right, but forward stance on even the most divisive and contentious issues. Well, what does that mean? A Don't you have to take a position on something? You Don't you have to take a position on something? You can't just say, well, I, you well, know, this I, is a hot button issue, so I'm not going to take a position on you. You know, if you want to run the country, you're going to have to make some hard decisions, Andrew. Uh, again, the forward party is about that common sense consensus majority view, which is very clear on abortion. It's clear. What about on guns? What guns? about it's assault clear weapons? On climate change. It's actually clear on just about every issue under the sun. Should 18 year olds we're, we're be able to buy AR 15s? Of of should, because of the nature of our system. Should 18 year olds be able to buy AR 15s? Again, the common sense consensus majority is that there should be some. Uh, rules around background checks and access to, to firearms. But we're not getting any of these things, Jim, because the two-party system does not need to deliver. But it doesn't sound like you're taking any hard positions. It sounds like you're trade power. It sounds like you're you're sort of a fill in the blank party. You you know, if if somebody uh, wants a, a a party with no clear policy positions, you're it. But unfortunately, in the real world, in the real world, you have to take a position on something. And that right there, my friends, is the exact moment where Andrew Yang's entire grift was exposed. That was just brutal. So he says the moderate population in both parties is unfortunately dwindling quickly. Really now? So the political incentives end up disproportionately empowering the 10% of extremes on both sides. First of all, what political incentives are you referring to? Second of all, do you honestly believe that there are just 10% of extremes on both sides? If we're going to claim that the social Democrats like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Cori Bush are extremes within the Democratic Party, sure, you can say that they're the extremes within the party. They're certainly not ideologically extreme compared to where the American people are at. But if you want to say with respect to the Democratic Party, sure, they're more extreme. I'll grant you that. But there are like 2% of extremists in the Democratic Party, whereas the Republican Party is comprised disproportionately of extremists. What, like 97%, 98% if we really want to be charitable here? Most of the Republican Party are extremists. So 
how are you going to create this false equivalence where you have extremists on both sides? Not all extremists, so-called extremists, are created equal. The extremists within the Democratic Party, like AOC, Ilhan Omar, they want everyone to have health care. Whereas the extremists in the Republican Party, they want a Trump-led dictatorship. These extremes are not equivalent. They're not comparable. It's a false equivalence to say that they are the same. Now, when it comes to his stance on Roe v. Wade, he says, I personally think women's reproductive rights are fundamental human rights, but the forward party has not a left or right, but forward stance on even the most divisive contentious issues. Now, my favorite part was when Jim Acosta said, what does that mean? <laughs> I mean, when your platitudes are so vapid that you have a CNN host asking you, what does that even mean? You've got a problem. What does that even mean? So you literally claim that abortion is a fundamental human right. So if you admit that it's a fundamental human right, then just for the sake of being centrist, you're going to have to find some common ground between people who think it's a fundamental human right and people who think that it's murder. How do you find that common ground? I mean, see, this is the problem. This is the problem with trying to be a centrist fence sitter in 2022 American politics when it comes to the issue of gay rights. Well, there are gay people who think that they should have full equality, and there are Republicans like Ron DeSantis who thinks that they should be completely cleansed from society. They shouldn't be allowed to be themselves in schools. They shouldn't have equal rights. They shouldn't be allowed to marry. So how do you find the middle point there, the forward point, if you will? Do you just, like, give gay people some rights and then split the difference because either side isn't going to be happy. Gay people rightfully want 100% equality. They want full equal rights and the extremists on the right, they don't want them to have any rights. So how are you going to appease both sides when you have to choose in this instance? Either one side's going to be happy and the other side is not going to be happy. That's the way that this issue is going to, uh, to bear out. And, and look, taking the middle point just to be a centrist fence sitter, in and of itself, that's not great. I mean, imagine if you took this middle point during the civil rights era, where it's like, mm, you know, some people think that segregation is uh, good and others think it's bad. Maybe we just like desegregate a little bit. How do you take this position? I mean, it's politically infeasible. It's It doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense whatsoever. Now, Andrew Yang continues here. Again, the forward party is about that common sense consensus majority view, which is very clear on abortion. And also it's very clear on every issue under the sun. Well, if it's clear on the issue, what is its stance? But, but he said, oh, we're very clear on climate change and abortion. We won't tell you our position, but we're very, very clear. I, I mean, ha how? I, like, I don't even know how to process this interview. It's that vapid. Like, where do you fall on the political compass? Like, on the political compass, Andrew Yang is trying to create this Z-axis, and that Z-axis is forward, and one way is for good things, and the opposite way is for bad things. That's, that's like, the only way I can try to visualize this incoherent ideology, but it's just, it's, it's complete nonsense. One more clip for you. In the real world, you have to take a position on something. Well, well, we're for the common sense consensus view on guns, abortion, climate change, but we're not getting a common but sense what, consensus what are those positions? on any of those things, Jim. And those Americans are just are sort of a fuzzy, why. but it's those are fuzzy, nebulous. It sounds like you came up with something in a focus group, uh, you know, common sense, you know, middle of the ground. That, that sounds wonderful. That sounds great. But at the end of the day, don't you have to take a position on something? Well, the, the great thing is the American people know where we want the country to go. And what we know that we need a more dynamic, truly representative system than we're getting right now, which is why the Ford Party is growing so quickly. Tens of thousands of Americans have signed up in all 50 states because we know that the two party system is getting worse, not better. And Who we is, know we need something new. OK, we're for the common sense consensus view on guns, abortion and climate change. And that common sense consensus view is. What? Fill in the blanks for us. He, he doesn't want to do that. And Jim Acosta was correct that this is a fill in the blank party. If you don't necessarily want to, you know, support Democrats or Republicans and you're kind of this political outsider, which most Americans are, Andrew Yang is correct about that, then perhaps you just visualize what you hope the party will say when it comes to particular issues, which is why he's very apprehensive about taking a firm stance. It's insane to me, and yet he still claims that, no, 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 we're very clear on these issues. I mean, if you go to their website, there's there's basically no policies. There's one page with nothing but platitudes, and there's another page where he names 
three policies, ranked choice voting, nonpartisan primaries, and independent redistricting committees. Now, one more thing that I wanted to say about this uh, with regard to his solution. So he claims, or doesn't necessarily claim to be fair, but implies that in the event we had multiple parties, then that would solve the issues, right? Because the problem is that most people don't necessarily agree with the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. But I mean, just having more parties, even if he were able to get institutional reforms to make that possible, it wouldn't be a panacea. There are other problems with our system, right? There's capitalism. There's a lot of things that you have to take into account when you look at the entirety of the American government. But just having more parties isn't a win in and of itself. I mean, some countries have a fuck ton of parties. Currently, right now, Brazil has, I believe, 40 active political parties, and their effective number of political parties is like eight or nine. Now, is Brazil really any better off than the United States? Just having more political parties isn't going to be the thing that changes our system. In some instances, it can create more problems because in Brazil, the parties don't really have a coherent political position. People create parties and leave parties all the time. So when you look at a a particular political party in Brazil, aside from the largest ones, it's hard to deduce what they actually stand for because there's so many of them. So there is a good number, like a happy medium. And I think that that number is probably like five to six. Germany, I believe, is a really good model for a political system that I would like to have. But Andrew Yang very clearly hasn't thought these things through. He hasn't consulted with political scientists. He's certainly consulted with, you know, people who do these focus groups, as uh, Jim Acosta uh, pointed out. But, I mean, this is all just, this is embarrassing. I don't know what to say. But Andrew Yang, if you want to actually create a a viable alternative to the Democratic and Republican parties, you're doing it wrong. And you're going to just further expose yourself as the vapid grifter that people are already realizing you are. So, I mean, if you actually want to be an alternative, you have to take positions. You can't ride the fence. You actually have to say, this is our stance on abortion. But it's really difficult to do this because trying to find that middle point between Democrats, small D Democrats, and fascists is going to be very difficult. I mean, how do you how do you bargain with people who want Trump to be a dictator? How do you bargain with people who actually want to subjugate certain minorities in this country, LGBTQ plus people, people of color, to second-class citizenship, who want women to not have control over their own bodies. How do you find the common sense center there? Do you base it specifically off of polling? Because that would be one way to do it, but he hasn't given us anything to work with here. It's just platitudes. And for that reason, the forward party is fucking a joke. And I think that more and more people are realizing that Andrew Yang himself is a joke, an opportunist, and definitely a grifter. 